All right, guys, we're going to integrate some trig functions today. Now, integrating our trig functions is essentially just the reverse of differentiating our trig function. So remember, if we differentiate sine, it goes to cos. So the integral of cos is sine plus c. Now, we might remember when we differentiate cos, it goes to negative sine. So the integral of sine is going to be negative cos. And when we differentiate tan, it goes to sec squared. So the integral of sec squared is tan. So these are kind of our standard forms, just based upon what we did previously with our differentiating trig functions. <coughs> Let's take a look now at some questions. So question one, we're going to integrate this. Let's get to it. You might remember when you differentiate trig, you find the derivative and of what you're taking the cos or sine or tan of and multiply it out the front. So this time we're going to do the opposite. Cos integrates to sine and it's going to be 1 over 2, 1 over the derivative of the bracket. Let's substitute in our result. Sine 2 times pi over 2 is just going to be pi minus half sine of 0. Now, from the sine graph, you may remember sine of pi is 0 and sine of 0 is 0. So this is all just a big old nothing. 0, 0. Nothing at all. How good. So let's look at our next question here. Sex squared, 2x plus pi. So we remember that sex squared like it says there, integrates to tan x. So it's going to be 1 over 2, 1 over the derivative of the bracket, very important. And the derivative of 2x plus pi is just 2. So it's going to be 1 over tan 2x plus pi. Pi on 8 and 0. Substitute in again. We have 1 over 2 tan of 2 times pi on 8, which is pi on 4 plus pi minus 1 over 2 tan of 2 times 0 plus pi, which is just tan of pi. Now pi on 4 plus pi is 1 over 2 tan of 5 pi on 4 minus, guess what tan of pi is? Tan of pi is 0. And if we go back, we can get that from the old tan graph as well. That's pi on 2. That's pi right there. It's 3 pi on 2. Yeah, and there's 2 pi at the end there, so it is 0. Now, tan, this here is a funny little result. That's essentially saying pi plus pi on 2. That puts it in the third quadrant, where tan is positive. So, it's essentially the same as tan pi on 4, which is 1. So, the answer is just a half. A couple of nice easier results there. Let's get into some ones that are going to require us to fire up the neurons a little bit more. So let's differentiate y equals x sine x, and then we're going to use that result to find the integral of x cos x. Let's differentiate it first. vu dash plus uv dash. Oh, this is product rule. It's function times function. Go, do some differentiating there. V u dash plus u v dash. Now we're going to use this in order to find this right here. So if we take a look at what we've just done, we've done dy over dx of x sine x equals sine of x plus x cos x. Now, let's try to operate backwards here. We want to find the integral of x cos x. So if we integrate both sides, we essentially undo this operation that we've just done there. So we have x sine x equals the integral of sine x plus x cos x dot dx should be there, dot dx should be there, dot dx, which is what we've just found. 
let us, now we can split this in half. We can operate with our integral this way, integral of sine x plus the integral of x cos x, both dot dx, keep forgetting to write that. And you can see where it goes. We can actually solve this like an equation here, start manipulating things around. So what we've got now is we've got x sine x minus the integral of sine x dot dx is equal to the integral of x cos x dot dx, which is essentially what I want to find. So now I've just got to integrate sine x. And we know from up above, the integral of sine x is a negative cos x. So that's going to give us the integral of x cos x is just x sine x minus negative cos x, so plus cos x, and then plus c. So there's just a few different examples of operating and operating with our inverse trig and looking at the results. And now we can essentially look at a different type of question. So let's do that right now. This can be an extension question. We want to find a little bonus one, pi on three and zero of tan to the seven x sec squared x dot dx. This one is very, very different and very, very exciting. So we remember what we had above, that sec integrates to tan, which means tan is going to differentiate into sec. We are going to do substitution here. I'm going to let u equal tan x. This is a reverse chain rule question. That's what makes it super fun. Differentiate u. Tan differentiates to sec squared x. Rearrange to make dx the subject. I can swap these two. Now, where we've got to go from before this, we're not done. These values there, they're x values. So when x is pi on 3, I need to evaluate for you. What is tan of pi on 3? If you remember going back to your triangles here, pi on 3 is 60. Tan, we have root 3, 2, 1. Tan of, oh, yeah, 60 is root 3. And tan of 0 is 0. So let's look at going back here. We've got root 3 and 0. Hey, Rosie. Cat's just prowling around. She's entered the fray. Substituting u as tan x. u to the 7 times sec squared x times du over sec squared x. These two are going to cancel. And look what we're left with. We're just integrating u to the 7. A nice, easy integration for us. It's u to the 8 over 8, root 3 and 0. Now, let's start putting some stuff in. This is where things get interesting. Square root of 3 to the power of 8 minus 0. How can we do the square root of 3 to the power of 8? Well, let's think about what it means. The square root of 3 is the same as 3 to the half. So the square root of 3 to the 8 is just like saying 3 to the power of half to the power of 8. Index laws say we multiply our indices. We end up with 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4, that's 81. So we have the answer of 81 over 8. Reverse chain rule with trig kind of takes us down the lead where we are going. And that right there is... Uh, Integrating our trig functions.